Hello, my name is Mark Jeffrey, and you are listening to episode 10 of the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show, brought to you by MPC Solutions. Thank you for joining me on what is now episode 10 of the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show, recorded April the 20th, 2017, from the studio on the hill, southwest UK, not a million miles from London. A podcast of my life through a lens aimed to inspire you, cheer you up in times of need, and possibly make you feel that your life is ready for the next episode. Coming up in this episode, I will be talking about reality TV, and is there really a point to it all? I will also be giving you my opinion on the military in the UK and are we dicing with danger when it comes to our military status. We also have music from tonight's unsigned artists, which are this week, the Duvets or the Duvets, however you want to pronounce it, and Last Orders. Episode 10, another milestone in the Mark Jeffrey podcast. This episode sees us hit double figures and I thank you for your support and also for your feedback over the last couple of months. If you'd like to contact me, send me an email at jaff10 at hotmail.com and I will do my very best to deliver your feedback. And like I said, it all goes to improve this amazing thing, which is the Mark Jeffrey podcast show. Anyway, episode nine that I done last week, um, I talked about changing my show description to inform my audience of exactly who I am. A lot of people didn't know who I was. They didn't know what I was about, what the show was about. They, they couldn't see it from my show description. So I changed it. And um, if you'd like to check that podcast out, I urge you to go back to my back catalogue and check out last week's episode, episode nine. Did it work? That's the first question. Changing my show description and detailing my episodes to pick up extra listeners. Did it work? Did I get more listeners last week? Well, the short answer to that is yes, indeed, it did. The last episode actually doubled my listening figures and has indeed pushed my podcast to the next the next level. Uh, Miss, you, your feedback and advice that you've been giving me over the last few months that has managed me to achieve this. So I take my hat off, give you a salute and thank you all. So the next level, I hear you ask, the next level, what does that mean to me? Well, when I first set up my 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 podcast, I set myself some aims, some, some levels of achievements. And um, level one was obviously starting the podcast up, getting the ball rolling, biting my teeth, you know, biting my tongue and getting out there and getting it rolling. Level two was about achieving the seven episode milestone. A lot of podcasters, struggled to get past the seven milestone so we're now on level we're now up to this you know show number 10 now so we've gone past that so i can ch- check that one off um level three was achieving a regular listener base that i was happy happy with so that i was able to get artists in to get interviews rolling um, and to be able to promote them so i said to myself that i wasn't going to introduce interviews to my podcast until i felt i had enough listeners to be able to promote them in a way that I thought would do them justice. Now, can you work on that? Do you understand what on earth I'm talking about? Well, what I'm t- what I am at saying is simply I didn't want to waste people's time. There is no point getting interviews for this podcast all lined up until I fe- till I felt that I had enough listeners to make it worthwhile to give the interviewee the justice that they quite rightly deserved. So at episode 10, I now feel that I'm able to take it up a level. Um, I'm now at level three. It is time to get you some interesting interviews. And I have been working, working hard. I have got a few interviews lined up instead of you listening to me every week, my boring voice, week in, week out. (laughs) The future of the Mock Jeffrey podcast show is looking great. And um, at a level I can now be happy with. Um, I have some nice interviews all lined up. Starting from next week, we have the guys from Mr. Rich and the caretaker in the studio. Um, Their music appeared on episode one, if I I do serve myself rightly. My pilot show, please check that out. I also have a huge inspiration in my life coming into the studio very, very soon. Her name is Jodine Boothby, owner of Gummy Limited. 
um, an ever expanding company here in the Southwest UK. So I'm really, really looking forward to talking to her. I also have Naomi Nash coming in very, very soon to talk about music festivals and which ones to look out for this summertime. Yes. Yes, yes. Music festivals in the UK are very, very big and they are nearly upon us. And she will be telling us the ones to look out for, the ones um, not to look out for. Um, I And I, you know, I, I did for the first time in a long time take a listen last week um, to last week's episode and wasn't really happy with how my audio sounded. So I'm going to have to tinker about with that. And um, some new podcast artwork is also in the pipeline. So very excited about that. Um, would you believe it? Um, one lady said to me the other day that she wouldn't listen to my podcast simply because it had a spider on the front of it and she didn't like spiders. So I think I'm going to have to check out um, my my artwork, change it a little bit. And also because my podcast, she said the artwork didn't really tell me anything about what the show was all about. So whenever she looked at my podcast um, image, it just had a spider and she, you know, it, it scared her a little bit. So very, very true. Very, very true. I, ha- I am going to have to get that sorted out. So um, what's been going over? What's been, what have you guys been up to over the last, um, last week? How's your week been? Have you, did you have a nice Easter? Yes, it's been Easter. Have you had a good one? Have you had a nice little Easter break? And um, I, I, I dare say you're like me, very much chocolate chocolated out from all the easter eggs you've eaten well in all fairness i'm pretty fed up with the, all the easter egg hunts that i've been doing um with the children it's all it's all for the children isn't it so that's the main thing but um why why do we have easter eggs for easter that's the question that i've always thought without turning this podcast into a religious podcast i i did look it up and this is what it came up it said during the the christian calendar event it became customary to buy chocolate eggs the sweet treats have a hollow center which has become a symbol of jesus empty tomb jesus's empty tomb <laughs> according to the bible the son of god's body was laid out in the tomb after crucifixion um, the scriptures state that when the stone covered the entrance was moved, the corpse there was nowhere to be found, and onlookers discovered that Jesus had risen. This is another reason why eggs are a common part of the religious ritual, as they are a sign of rebirth. So that's the Easter egg. That's the reason why we eat Easter eggs for Easter. What about the Easter bunny? Well, bunnies are nowhere to be found in the biblical scriptures. Um, but this hasn't stopped the cute creature from becoming associated with Christian, to di- Christian tradition. Easy for me to say. Easter bunnies were incorporated to the mainstream tradition in the 17th, 17th century. God, I've put my false teeth in. Early de- de- um, depictions from Germany showed that the floppy-eared creatures delivered toys and eggs in baskets to Christian families. It's difficult to pinpoint the exact origin of the rabbit symbol, but many scholars believe it it stems from pagan rituals. The pagan festival, now I ain't going to even attempt to pronounce this, (laughs) is dedicated to the goddess of fertility, who is often um, depicted as a bunny. As the term to go at it like rabbit suggests, the animals are often associated with fertility. This ties in well with the Bible as Easter um, celebrates the rebirth of Jesus following his crucifixion. Glad I've got that finished. Well, you know, making it a lighter note now over Easter, I received two Easter eggs this year, one from the mother-in-law, which was a, um, a mini eggs sort of Easter egg thing. And the other one was from the girlfriend. And it is that one, the one from the girlfriend that I'd like to talk to you about um, before we go into a song. Now, who who in the right mind thought it would be a good idea to introduce a Marmite Easter egg? <laughs> yes, a Marmite Easter egg. Now, don't get me wrong, I do I do like Marmite. I like Marmite in the mornings on me toast. And for you guys that don't know what Marmite is, it's um I don't know how to describe it really. It's like a it's like a yeast extract that you put on your toast, which is um it's really nice, a meaty meaty sort of thing um but marmite mixed into chocolate to form an easter egg it's just wrong it's just so wrong in so many ways even on the packaging yeah it says you either like it or you hate it 
but please give it a try. Now, so I did. I, I did give it a try. Now, chili chocolate, you know, I, I kind of understand that. I understand that chili and chocolate go well together, but, but yeast infused chocolate? Nah, nah, sorry. <laughs> I'm out on this one. Nikki, thanks, um, but no thanks. If anybody would like to come to my house, feel free to open up my fridge and steal my mama egg, which after one day of being opened in the fridge has already stunk and tainted all the food <laughs> in the fridge. So um, this morning I, I woke up, had a burp, I had a cup of coffee, had a burp, and, and 10 hours on from trying that horrible mama egg, I can still taste marmite whatever next whatever next what are they gonna do next year a cod liver oil chocolate egg i hope not anyway next week we um this next we have a band which unlike marmite i know you're all gonna love during um the week i've been in contact with a lovely man by the name of john horn and he plays in a band called the duvet the duvets and it, oh, I always struggle to say that one, the duvets, and and is also a key figure in my promotion team. Now, promotion team, I hear you ask. Um, that's a topic for another podcast, but briefly, I have a, a, approximately 10, 10 to 11, 12, 13 family and friend members who put a link out to my about my podcast every week and urge their friends to take a listen and help me to promote my product. Now, this is something that I've I've talked about in the past, and I urge all of you that are setting up something in the industry or indeed um, anything in any industry when they get started out, promotion is a big, big thing. And it, I think everybody, whatever you're promoting, you need to, to get a promotion team together. So um, as a big thank you to John, I asked him to to send me in a few tracks for me to pick one of and to play to you tonight, this afternoon, wherever you're listening. Um, this week is indeed another covers show. As last week, I'd done a few covers and lots of people commented on how they enjoyed the covers and on the podcast. So before I play you the cover, I just wanted to introduce the duvets a little better. So here is what John had to say. The duvets were formed nearly three years ago. And, um, and after a long debate about the name for the band, they decided to go by the name of duvets as they done simply covers along with the, um, with that pun and added, um, they used sheet music. They started in spring and they have four posters, et cetera, et cetera. Do you get, do you get where they're coming from here now? Now, John says we consist of Janet on the lead vocals, John himself on the acoustic guitar, the mandolin, the ukulele and vocals. We also have Dave on the acoustic guitar and Ian on the bass. We do a variety of covers from Stereophonics, Fleetwood Mac, Slade, Status Quo, the Zootons, etc. And, and all in their own acoustic style, which I think you're going to love. And they've been playing all over the Southwest UK with gigs in and around the Plymouth area. And their ethos is to have a good old time, singing classic songs with as much audience specific participation as possible and um, we love it when the audience joins in with a sing-along a dance and that is the main reason why we play he said if i had to describe our music it would be upbeat feel good classic songs for dancing to or just listening to with friends or family we like to have a good laugh and banter with each other and the audience as well isn't that what counts isn't that what it's all about well yes indeed it is john John, John kindly sent me in two covers to choose from, and it was a hard choice for me to choose, I must admit, as I like both of them. But this song that I'm going to play for you, Just Pip the Post. See how long it takes you to guess the tune. <laughs>
drinking for two Originally sung by the Stereophonics, covered by the Duvets on episode 10 of the Mark Jeffrey podcast show. That is Dakota. And if you'd like to check out more of the Duvets, check out them on their Facebook page. Um, simply look for the Duvets. And if you're local to me here in the Southwest UK, they have a few gigs that they wanted me to mention. Um, Sunday, the April the 30th, they are at the Seven Stars, Tamit and Folio, from four o'clock to six o'clock. Saturday, the 30, sorry, Saturday, the May the 6th, they are the Volunteer Inn at Yelmpton, 9 p.m. to 11 o'clock. And on Saturday, May the 13th, they're at the Royal Oak in Who. 9 p.m. to 11. Now, John didn't leave it there. He, he he was also kind enough to ask me this question, and he said, are there too many reality TV shows, and are there any point to them? Well, to be honest, I, I really don't know how to answer that one, John. Um, I don't really know the true meaning of reality TV. Um, I... I don't really watch much TV as a rule, so I had to look this one up. Um, And this is the description I found for reality television. Reality television is a genre of television programming that documents and supposedly unscribed real-life situations and often features an otherwise unknown cast of individuals who are typically not professional actors, although in some shows celebrities may participate so so um then i wasn't really really sure myself about that so i had to find some of these these um reality tv shows so here are some of the ones i found the voice keeping up with the kardashians master chef fear factor hell's kitchen ice road trucking big brother britain's got talent dancing on ice strictly come dancing 
and they are just to name a few. Well, out of those ones that I've just said there now, Big Brother, um, not Big Brother, I take it all back, The Voice. Um, I kind of love everything that show is all about, to be fair, The Voice. I'm a big fan of The Voice. Not a big fan of Britain's Got Talent or um, things like that, but The Voice, I, I'm a fan of The Voice. Now, Big Brother, um, I've got a lot of lot of time for Big Brother. Well, I used to have a lot of time for Big Brother. Back in the days, about 10, 15 years ago, I actually participated in an audition. I travelled all the way up to Cardiff in Wales, and I spent the whole day in a queue waiting to try to get into the Big Brother house. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I wasn't crazy enough to get in, but it was a really, really good day out and um, something that I can honestly say that I'm proud of. And whenever I um, are in a pub having a chat to people and I mention that I auditioned for Big Brother, it always kind of gets um, a strange, a strange response. Now, since Big Brother's gone from Channel 4 here in the UK and moved to Channel 5, um, I'm not really a big fan, to be fair. They've they've gone down the route now. I'm 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 afraid, big brother of, um, celebrity people that hang around with celebrities tend to get on the show, and um, I've I've lost a lot of interest in it now. But so to conclude the answer, John, I can't really talk much about reality TV, um, because I don't know much about it. Um, you know, I don't get much chance to watch TV in my house. That's the problem. What with um, my girlfriend, she watches a lot of the TV, Nikki, and the kids. I don't really get a lot of time. Me, personally, I like YouTube. I, I sit for hours on end on my phone in the front room with my headphones on watching YouTube. And they say that 2017 is going to be the year someone becomes a celebrity from being spotted on the YouTube channel. Thousands upon thousands of people are now tuning in to the YouTube channels. And like I've said before, YouTube is, is massive. And in 2017, it is going to be the year to make it big. If you, if you fancy becoming a celebrity, um, you no need, you no longer need to be spotted. You no longer need to go to these big brother auditions to get on the TV, start making you doing your own interviews, start um, doing your own documentaries, start making your own short films and put them out there on the net, on YouTube and on all these other sites. You you know, you don't need all this expensive equipment. Like I've said before, get your mobile phone out. It does it all. Um, and just sit there, take, just take some videos of yourself interviewing people and just doing some crazy stuff, put it out there and you'll be surprised where it may get you. So there you are, John. I hope that answers your question. Um, I hope it, um, I hope it fulfills your needs. So what have I got next for you? Well, um, yes, I have another special treat, another band from the city of Plymouth here in the southwest UK, where it all happens. They are the Last Orders. They're a five-piece rock band, um, but but at the moment they're also venturing down the acoustic route. The members include Zoe Miller, the lead singer. You've got David Todd, the lead guitarist. You've got Dave Todd on the rhythm guitar, and you've got Paul Suckling on the drums. Mike Delamere on the bass guitar, and you can find them on their Facebook channel by typing in www.facebook.com forward slash Last Orders Plymouth. Um, and I'd just like to thank Dave and the gang for once again getting me out of the poop and sending me in some tunes at such short notice. They're a great gang, um, well gelled um, team there together, and um, I've got a lot of time for these guys. Um, again, they gave me three acoustic tunes that Dave said um, they recorded in their front room. <laughs> and um, again, I loved all of them. But here is the one that I chose. And um, see how long it takes you to recognise it, shall we? <laughs>
Such an, a beautiful tune there. Originally sung by Soul Asylum, covered today by Last Orders, especially for the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show, episode 10. That was Last Orders, Runaway Train. And all the links to tonight's artists will be on this episode's show description if you'd like to check them out. Now, Dave has a question for me that... Um, I'm going to find it hard to answer in such a small amount of time that I have left here. His question was, are governments of recent times correct in allowing our armed forces and specifically our Royal Navy, that's in the UK, by the way, to be run down to such a dangerously low level where if needed, we would find the defence of our country difficult whilst at the same time overseeing vast amounts of foreign aid leaving this country now dave i could talk to you for hours over a beer about this one but simply the answer has to be no i'm a big believer in foreign aid and we are the fifth wealthiest country here in the uk in the world and i feel it is our duty to help others out but at the same time charity does start at home and everyone especially the uk armed forces are feeling the pinch and now Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the Labour Party, as much as um, he gets a bad press, I feel that he's got this one right, um, to be fair. He, his idea is to scrap our nuclear programme and invest that huge amount of money back into our armed forces. I mean, as a country, the UK um, is weak. We are weak at the moment and we rely so much on the United States and all the other allied countries. So uh, it is quite scary in the fact that we are a little island here in the UK. Our Navy is at its weakest. Our army, well, can we really call it an army anymore? I mean, we're under the 240,000 marks, uh, you know, troops. So we're kind of a, no longer an army. We're a liberation. You know, we're, we're running on, on a weak forces. Um, so I think we need, like I say, like Corbyn says, I think we need to start, we need to scratch this, um, we need to scrap this um, plan of nuclear weapons. Get rid of them. We don't need them anymore. We, do, we, should be, we should be the head of the field telling the world not to use nuclear weapons. We don't need them. And um, to spend that money wisely on defending our country with troops. Get the troops back in. Defending our borders. Get the naval ships back up. Protecting our borders. Um, but my question for you, Dave, back at you is, do you think, right, that NATO and our allies would stand beside us and defend us if we was to have an attack on our country like us as a country expect them to. Answers on a postcard to jaff10 at hotmail.com and don't forget to send me your feedback. You can hear us again on the Mix Cloud, on Mix Cloud. You can hear us again on iTunes, YouTube and don't forget to check out my webpage wwwjaff 10 dot simple site dot com special thanks to tonight's unsigned artists for helping me out at such short notice the duvets and last orders oh oh and before i um, go this coming weekend i'm celebrating my 40th birthday now my birthday isn't until may but i'm spending the weekend with some very very close friends of mine down in my caravan down in cornwall um we're using our caravan as a hub and we're going to go off and do many a pub and ale house um, so you can check us out down St. Marin down in Cornwall this weekend if you want to come and join me. So next week's show, um, I may have a few stories to tell you. I warn you in advance. 
I also may have a sore head. I warn you in advance on that one as well. So until next week, I leave you with this thought. Look after yourselves and others around you. And remember this one thing. Your life may not be as crazy as you once thought it was. (laughs) 